Welcome to episode 1 of Tactics and Maneuvering, where we'll look at BFM, or Basic Fighter Maneuvers. This episode is split into three parts, BFM Fundamentals, Offensive BFM, and Defensive BFM. Let's get started. Basic Fighter Maneuvers, or BFM, are the foundational techniques used in fighter tactics. They are not a set of canned maneuvers, but rather a dynamic combination of roles, turns and maneuvers to create or solve BFM problems. With advancements in technology, the real-world application of BFM is becoming less common as engagements increasingly take place in the beyond visual range arena. Missile developments aim to eliminate the possibility of within visual range engagements commonly referred to as dogfights. The measure of success in 1v1 air combat is simple. It is to kill or be killed. As a result, one pilot is almost certain to die when they enter into a dogfight. For this reason, within visual range engagements are to be avoided at all costs. While this is simple in concept, during real life conflicts this cannot always be mitigated, and there may be a time when an enemy aircraft is able to enter the within visual range arena without detection. This is the concept known as the fog of war, where situational awareness is degraded by uncertainty, incomplete intelligence and unknown adversarial capabilities. For this reason, fast jet pilots must master the principles of BFM to be prepared for such eventualities. I would like to make the disclaimer now that I am not a fighter pilot, nor do I claim to know everything about this topic. This video is made entirely from my own research, and as a result this video will not contain any classified or otherwise protected information, with all sources readily available on the internet. I can highly recommend DCS debriefs videos on BFM, as they inspired me to make this one as well as the infamous book of Fighter Combat Tactics and Maneuvering by Robert L. Shaw. A caveat to this video is that DCS World is a video game and as such it is impossible to code the fear of death. This makes it much more difficult to intimidate opponents. In real life there is no respawns and you have one opportunity to get it right. In DCS you can hold the G override button and pull to your heart's content because there's no tech log to sign and explain to the engineers why the wing spars are bent. This means that playing realistically may actually be a disadvantage in DCS World. Before discussing the different manoeuvres we must first understand some basic principles. When flying an aircraft pulling back on the stick will pitch the nose up. This increases the angle of attack and subsequently total lift. This relationship is linear up to a point called the lift limit. Beyond this point flow separation occurs and the wing will become stalled, where the lift decreases dramatically and the induced drag increases. As thrust will be left at full reheat or afterburner for those across the pond during BFM, lift and drag are the only factors that can determine an aircraft's performance. With an increase in lift there is also an increase in load factor or g-force. The aircraft will have design limits for the maximum permitted load factor, which means that if the aircraft is going too fast and tries to max perform, it may well hit the load limit first. If the speed is too low when max performing an aircraft, you will enter a lift limit pull, where you are pulling to the maximum amount of lift possible at that energy state. This will give you impressive instantaneous turn rate at the cost of reducing airspeed. This is called an energy exertion where you are able to trade in airspeed for instantaneous turn rate. Conversely, attempting to max perform when too fast will enter a load limit pull and the flight control system will hold the aircraft at the maximum permitted load limit of 7.5G in the Hornet. The speed will continue to increase as the induced drag is low at low angles of attack. The turn rate will remain constant but the turn radius will begin to increase. For this reason, detailed performance analysis is typically conducted for all fast jet aircraft to derive a rate band of speeds where the aircraft is able to generate the highest turn rate for the lowest energy loss. These numbers are therefore obviously classified to protect the interests of the nations that operate these aircraft, but as DCS World is a video game, the performance of the aircraft can be reverse engineered to find the speeds to fly at when engaged in BFM. As this video will be focused on operating the DCS FA-18C Hornet, we can use the maximum sustained turn rate speed of 430 knots calibrated airspeed, with a max rate band from 400 to 460 knots calibrated airspeed. This is the speed to aim for when fighting another aircraft to give you the maximum sustained turn rate of around 21 degrees per second for a clean aircraft. It is advisable to fly slightly faster than 430 knots to give the aircraft excess energy that can be used for an energy exertion. The aim of basic fighter manoeuvring is to drive your aircraft into the adversary's control zone with range, angles and closure under control. 
Once inside the control zone, the aim is to actively remain there before using an energy exertion manoeuvre to enable weapons employment. There are three axioms in BFM that you should ingrain in your mind. First one is lose sight, lose the fight. When engaged in air combat, stay padlocked to the bandit and don't lose sight. By looking away for more than a second, the bandit can be in a completely different place than when it started. You can't fight an adversary if you can't see them. Keep a good lookout scan going when flying in contested airspace so you aren't caught unaware by a hostile aircraft. By keeping eyes on the target, you're able to better predict their next movements. Learn to fly the aircraft without needing to look forward and get a feel for manoeuvring when looking up or behind. In DCS World it is beneficial to have a VR headset as you can move your head around the seat to look at the target. It also gives a more realistic sense of distance and speed to fly more accurately. The second axiom is that all manoeuvres should be relative to the bandit either in response to what the bandit is doing or to force a mistake from them. This means that the same manoeuvres should be used whether in a vertical fight or a horizontal fight. It is all relative to what the bandit is doing and not which way the nose is pointing. The third axiom is energy versus nose position. Energy is a crucial resource when fighting an opponent. Too much and you can't turn fast enough, too little and you lose the ability to turn altogether. Managing your energy is just as important as getting nose on. Consequently, if you have excess energy, you will be able to trade this in for nose position. It is important to learn when to conserve and regain energy and when to cash it in for nose position. The Hornet also has a G-limit override engaged by holding the paddle switch. This changes the maximum G from 7.5 to 10 G. Other players may use it against you so it's a good tool to have if they do. Many consider using it to be unsportsmanlike as it would only be used in emergencies for real. We will now take a look at the terminology for BFM. Range, Angles and Closure Range is the distance between two aircraft in a straight line. It is typically stated in nautical miles or feet, where one nautical mile is 6,000 feet. Angles, or angle off tail, is the angular position of the defender's tail. Zero degrees angle off tail is directly behind the defender, and 180 degrees is directly ahead of the defender. The closer to zero degrees angle off tail the attacker is, the more of a position or advantage they have. Closure is the relative change in separation between the two aircraft, typically measured in knots. Closure must be controlled to achieve and maintain a positional advantage. The turn circle has three elements, the bubble, the control zone and the attack window. The bubble is a sphere with a radius equal to that of the turn the aircraft is making, given the current energy state. An aircraft physically cannot turn inside its own bubble, as it is limited by its maximum performance of that given energy. Therefore, if an attacker is inside the defender's bubble, there is physically no way that the defender can turn to place its nose on the attacker. The control zone is a three-dimensional conical area behind the target aircraft. If an attacking aircraft arrives in this zone with range, angles and closure under control, there is nothing the defending aircraft can do to deny the attacking aircraft a position or advantage. The attack window is a point in space where if the attacking aircraft performs an attack window entry, it will arrive in the control zone of the defender with range, angles and closure under control. When flying, a turn always has two features. Turn rate describes the angular rate of heading change in degrees per second. With the same turn radius, the aircraft with the higher turn rate will travel around the circle faster. Turn radius is half the width of the turn circle and the fighter with the smaller turn circle can enter into and stay inside the opponent's turn circle. This means that they can no longer physically get nose on, no matter how hard they try. It is crucial to be able to identify and correct for misaligned turn circles. Due to the pure geometry of a misaligned turn circle, the defender will be able to come to bear on the attacker if no appropriate action is taken. This presents itself with the target moving up and down in the sight picture. The more it oscillates, the more misaligned the turn circles are. Work out where the circles are, then extend at the right point to align the circles and reset your pull. This will align the circles and present a much more stable sight picture in the cockpit. Equally, if the positioning is right, misaligned turn circles can be used in as advantage, as the attacker will eventually come to bear on the defender with no need for an energy exertion. When this happens, align the pipper and pull the trigger to score the kill. 
When flying behind another aircraft, you can use one of three pursuit curves to control the closure and range to your target. Lead, pure and lag pursuit mean putting the nose ahead, on or behind the target. This will cause you to decrease range for lead and pure and either increase or maintain range for lag. Using a variety of different pursuit curves allows you to manoeuvre into the correct location. Having too much lead will cause one of three types of overshoot. An in-close overshoot occurs when the flight path overshoot is forward of the control zone. An instantaneous reversal can cause a 3-9 line overshoot. A flight path overshoot occurs by flying through the adversary's flight path. If this happens within or after the control zone, it denies a reversal opportunity. A 3-9 line overshoot occurs when the attacker overshoots the defender's 3-9 line. This results in a positional roll reversal, causing the attacker to become the defender. Dogfights are categorised by two flows. Two circle flow is where each aircraft is turning around a different post and are nose to tail. After a merge, both aircraft turn towards opposite directions, i.e. the bandit turns north and the fighter turns south. The aircraft with a higher turn rate will gain the positional advantage. A two circle fight is therefore termed a turn rate fight. If however both aircraft turn toward the same direction they will enter a one circle fight. The two aircraft are then nose to nose and will merge on the other side of the circle. The aircraft with the smallest turn radius will have the positional advantage and gain sensor nose on first. A one circle fight is therefore termed a radius fight. When taking shots they will typically be a tracking gun solution or a snapshot. Tracking guns is what it says on the tin. You place the pipper over the target and track it through the sky. Pull the trigger for approximately one second and the rounds will hit the target. A snapshot is where the target is rapidly travelling through the HUD and will only momentarily pass through the gun pipper. By placing the pipper ahead of the adversary and pulling the trigger early, you can establish rounds downrange before the target flies through. Release the trigger as the target passes the pipper to conserve ammunition. Typically, when engaged in BFM, both aircraft will travel along circles that lie on the same plane of motion. That is, the discs are not tilted relative to one another. This is called in-plane manoeuvring. However, it may be beneficial for one of the pilots to tilt their plane of motion relative to the bandit. This is called an out-of-plane manoeuvre and will be discussed in the next section. That concludes part 1 on BFM fundamentals and in part 2 we will look at offensive BFM where you are the attacking aircraft and are behind the opponent's 3-9 line. We will look at different manoeuvres and some example dogfights and in-depth analysis. Thank you for watching and see you in part 2.